Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of The Fad Show. So in today's episode, I just wanted to give you an update on my Mark IV BEW TDI wagon. Uh, so if you've been following this channel or this series, uh, you know I bought this about six months ago now. Uh, and pretty much since the day I've had it, it hasn't run right. Uh, I've been chasing down a lot of issues with it. The first thing I did was inspect and replace the camshaft that was worn, and that definitely improved my power a little bit. Uh, I guess I forgot to mention, like kind of the issue I was having with the car was just like really down on power and I was having inconsistent power issues. Uh, so I replaced the camshaft, that made it better. The issue was still uh, prevalent. So then I thought it might be a tuning or a fueling issue. Uh, so I got the car retuned. It did have a smoke tune on it, which was causing it to flood out. So I made it a little bit better, but still hadn't really completely fixed it. Um, so then I went into VCDS and I logged my boost uh, parameters and the like requested boost that the computer was demanding was not what it was actually getting. Uh, so I suspected that the uh, either the turbo vanes were stuck or there was some sort of vacuum leak. I did a smoke test on it. I did find a couple of vacuum leaks. I replaced all the vacuum lines, the N75 valve, um, but the issue still continued. So then I did the kind of cheap turbo vane fix of spraying oven cleaner down the EGR port. That didn't work, issues still remained. So I decided to go ahead and pull the turbo and clean it. And uh, I'm sorry, I did a lot of this stuff kind of off camera. Um, I was just troubleshooting, obviously I didn't know what the problem was. So it was kind of hard to do a how to video and say this is the problem when I didn't actually know. And then the turbo video, I just figured it wouldn't really make for good content since it's all on the backside of the engine and it's just impossible to film. So I removed the turbo, I went to clean it, and then I found the turbo was in a very, very bad state. Uh, so I guess I'll go ahead and uh, show you guys now what I found when I pulled the turbo and looked inside. So here's the turbo that came out of the car. Uh, I'll get my GoPro and show some closer up shots, um, but basically the tip of each turbine blade is broken off. Um, and then also you can kind of see on the VNT vans where they must have hit the, um, hit the turbo because some of the VNT vans are also bent and broken. So I'm not exactly 100% sure how this happened. I'm not sure if the car definitely had a smoke tune on it. And then maybe if these got stuck and then that just caused the EGT temperatures to go crazy and this expanded enough that they made contact. I'm not sure, um, that's kind of my hypothesis, um, but obviously I'm not an expert at this. Um, so obviously I put a new turbo in the car. Uh, so this is actually an upgraded turbo. It's a Garrett VNT 17. Uh, so I went ahead and put the same turbo in the car. It's actually the cheapest option for the BEW, even though it's like an upgrade over the stock turbo, which is a KP39. Um, it, and it's even cheaper than the Borg Warner S7 too. So it's the, uh, I guess, best kind of OE plus turbo um, and it's the cheapest. Um, so that was the state of my turbo, definitely not in a good place. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned as, as far as where all these pieces of metal from the turbo ended up because they weren't in the turbo casing. I'm guessing they went down the downpipe and are probably living out in the catalytic converter right now. Um, I don't know, maybe to be a hundred percent sure I should replace my downpipe or at least take it off and take, take it out. But I've been driving the car with the new turbo in it for, I don't know, 50 or so miles so far with no issues and fingers crossed it's not going to be an issue. Obviously it's a really cheap car, so I'm not, turbos are not cheap, but it is a cheap car. So I'm not too whatever. If it was my all track, I probably definitely would pull the down pipe and inspect it. But this car, I think I'll take the risk. Um, and maybe if I get a chance someday, I'll remove that and look in there. Uh, hopefully they're fine pieces and they stayed away from the engine. Um, I guess I don't really have the actuator set up that I can show you that, but obviously it was really jammed up too. So that's where the Volkswagen project is. I, order a new turbo from ID parts of the NT17. I put it in, again, I didn't make a video on it just cause I didn't think it would be worthwhile um, as far as the turbo location on this car as it was gonna be impossible to film. I just followed the myturbodiesel.com 
turbo replacement like right up and it was I mean I just read it before I did it and I didn't even have to refer to it. It was definitely pretty easy as far as just pulling the intake and then pulling the turbo. I kind of just disconnected everything down below first, then I went up top and disconnected everything up top, pulled the intake, pulled the turbo. It only took me like two hours when I wasn't filming, so it's definitely not a bad job. It's a little bit tight and you are working by feel, but yeah, so that's the status of my Mark IV. So that's a wrap on this episode, guys. I just wanted to give you an update on the Mark IV BEW TDI wagon. Uh, for those of you that are curious, uh, I promise that going forward, I will be filming more content on this car and kind of more mechanical how-to and non-mechanical like aesthetic how-to stuff on it. Uh, but now that I got the car driving absolutely flawlessly, for the first time in six months. Uh, I'm super happy and I plan to just drive it pretty much every day now. Um, but over time, I'm gonna slowly make some more improvements. There's a few more mechanical issues I wanna do as far as I wanna do rear brakes, uh, fix the worn out bump stops in the rear shocks. Um, then I'll do a transmission service, flush the brake fluid, and then I think it will be kind of 100% mechanically sound. I might do motor mounts. The uh, Passenger side one was pretty bad when I pulled it out to do the timing belt. So I'm guessing the transmission mount and the dog bone are probably in a similar state. So I might go ahead and do those also. Uh, and then I'll kind of work on some interior stuff as far as any I find a uh, source of glove box for it because the one in here uh, is broken or was broken and is missing. Um, I have a sunroof rattle I need to try and figure out. And then uh, I'll probably put new headlights on it just because these are really uh, yellowed to the point where I don't think they can be saved, even though they are already Eurospec headlights. I'll probably just order VX tuning Ecos because I had those on my last one and I'm pretty happy with them. The price on them is great. It's like $150. Uh, unfortunately, they do have plastic lenses. For some reason, you can't even buy glass lenses for Mark IVs anymore, which you used to be able to. I'm not really sure what happened there, uh, but I guess I'll just go ahead and get those VX tuning Ecos and then I'll probably just put some um, whatever the protect, paint protective film on them to keep them from uh, yellowing. And then as far as cosmetic stuff goes, I haven't really decided if I wanna paint the car or not. Um, obviously the clear coat's fading on the roof and on the hood. Um, so I'm thinking I'm leaning towards doing it, getting the roof resprayed and the hood resprayed. Um, I don't know, I don't really care too much what the car looks like. I just like driving these things, but it does make me feel a little bit better having a good looking car. So perhaps I'll get those done. This cowl is cracked, I'll replace that, kind of restore some of the trim stuff on it. Um, the wheels, I would like to get repowder coated or powder coated. I think they're plasti dipped right now. I don't know, they just kind of look dull and I'm not really sure what color I would go. If you have any recommendations, I was kind of just thinking of going back to like the stock BBS color, but then also I feel like bronze would kind of look good on this darker blue. So we'll see, I'll figure that out. Uh, I don't know, these tires seem all right but they are kind of Indonesian tires, no brand, no name brand tires. So uh, if I see a good deal on a set of Continentals, I'll probably throw some new tires on it. And uh, I mean, that's all I have planned. I'm sure other stuff will come up or they'll think of other stuff along the way. Um, so that's what you guys have to look forward to on this car. Um, as always, please like and subscribe if you like this video and uh, stay tuned for next time. Thank you, bye.